Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. It's Ken and Kelsey up in Estes Park. We finally got up here. The fires are over. We're so happy. We have a 2021 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. And we're pulling a Cimarron 4 horse. That's our, our normal test trailer from Trans West. And it weighs about almost 9,200 pounds. So we're going up and down the mountain. Kelsey, how much power do we have? We have 381 horsepower to 401 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, it's like anything. It's like, you know, how's this truck going? Well, this truck's 14 years old. So this, this is, truck is not 14 years old. The, well, the technology this one, but, in yeah. this truck is 14 years yeah. old, and it is proving that it works. Yeah, so this one is a, is a proven thing. You don't have to, it's not an experiment. It's not the first year. It's not the, the one that breaks down all the time. It has a lot of recalls. They've actually got this one figured out. So that's probably why Toyota keeps making the same truck over and over, just like Nissan. It makes that frontier forever. Oh, yeah. And, you know, all those things has a reason for it, but... Well, you know, the TRD Pro helps you off-road, but it doesn't help with trailers because they want wheel travel. That's how you get a good rock climbing experience. So with the, the better travel on the wheels, you also have more squat with the trailer. So this is what you get with an off-road package towing a trailer. So we've got squat towing uh, about 9,200 pounds. So you got a little over 900 pounds of tongue weight. And it sure left the truck pointing in the sky. So if you got a regular Tundra, you wouldn't have this problem, but that's what I think. To make up for the squat, what Toyota does is they have this little button here. You can raise or lower your headlights, which is something I need to set. Otherwise I get flashed on the road when I'm pulling a trailer. So that's the one right there that you got to adjust. And in there, hope you can see, that's your factory brake controller, which I like. There's your tow hold button right above it. And what I like about this is I put on whatever gain I want, and right now it's pretty touchy on the brakes. This truck's a little touchy on acceleration. It's got all the good power and a low rear end ratio so you got to be careful when you take off it don't want this to go so with the trailer you don't want to be jerking all over the place it's nice to have power but you got to control it so you got to back off a little but yeah set up for a trailer tow all mode brake control with the brake controller if you have it set on like five in a lot of trucks it gives you 50 or 50 percent when you grab the manual override there button right there on this one it goes hundred percent which is really nice because then you don't have to worry about adjusting it. You get the brake control you're trying to get. You just got to be careful on the lever itself that you're not squeezing all the way over there. You can kind of feather it and adjust how much brake you want just on the trailer. And you need that in like sway conditions or sometimes run into ice and things. You don't want to hit the truck brakes. You want to hit that independent uh, brake controller on your dash. Yes, indeed. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.tv. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, the, the engine, I'm sorry, go ahead. The, the power to this truck, it, it's not really acting like there's a trailer back there, but yeah. I don't know, it's, it's kind of a heavy trailer, so this thing is squatted down and it kind of leans a little more than I'm used to. Yeah, and that squat has something to do with the TRD Pro because they got a little more suspension travel or something on it. But yeah, and I've seen that with Titans. All the Japanese companies, it seems like they always need overload springs or something on the back to help them because they do sag the most of any of the trucks in the half ton class. So I don't know. All the TRD Pros we've had have squatted with trailers. Without trailers, it's fine. I think without trailers, you get really good visibility because they don't yeah. have their giant tall nose. It and looks giant been, now because we're squatting, but yeah. I'm kind of pushed up in the nose right now, and you guys will see that in the opening. Yeah, that's the that's the fake hood too, which they always look cool, but to me there's <laughs> no purpose. Scoop. Yeah, and I would rather have the visibility than the fake scoop, but that's 
people like him. I like him too. I used to put him on Mustangs and all kinds of things. I don't have any on trucks right now because I like visibility. You know, that's when you're towing traders, you like to see what in the world you're doing. Oh yeah, we got to put on that back camera, the side camera for the uh, whatever you call it, the uh, beautiful scenery someplace. I should have thought of that sooner. We've been by that place. We normally do it. Sorry. Well, that's not bright. Well, we can put it up at the top and just have it on all the way down. Yeah. That probably gets the footage. Well, the, uh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you about this puppy. So, anyway, Andre and I did the Ike Gauntlet, and we had the Silverado, and it had the external clue. Actually, it wasn't external necessarily. It was the radiator, like a lot of GMs okay. do. And a lot of people have gone to an upgrade system where it's an external one. I like the external one. I like to have all the cooling I can get on the transmission. Because I burned up transmissions before without having an external cooler. But Toyota says no, you don't need it. Chevy on the, the half ton silver out of the 1500, it goes through the radiator, so that's something. That's still not my favorite system. But uh, Toyota, the engineers that Andre talked to said that they were about, you know, you know, we try not to get above 250 degrees on the transmission. And going through the Ike, coming back up it, going down it, I think you got to uh, 208 degrees going down, which you know is not a big pressure thing, but you do have some resistance with your torque converter with engine braking with uh, you know transmission doing the uh, this has tow haul mode so the tow haul mode and all that can add some heat to the transmission so glad this has tow haul mode and built-in brake control the factory one but that was uh 208 and then you know the toyota guys the engineers told andre you don't want to go 250 degrees and we went 246 degrees up to the tunnel going up the hill Pushing it a little yeah, bit, huh? we were right on the edge, and the Silverado got up to 214, which is more of a temperature I'm used to. So that's their theory. I'm sorry, what was you going to say? Uh, they're pushing it if you're getting to 250. Yeah, they are. That's awfully close, 246. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's really hard to argue with engineers because uh, I guess they, they, they do all this. It's their job. They do all this, yeah. They test all this stuff, right? That's, that's the plan. These are these are Texas trucks that come out of San Antonio. That's where they're made. But I will say I love the tank size on this. It's 38 yeah. gallon. That's more than my 150, which was best in class at 36. Yeah, but 38 gallons for the tank. Where's our fuel mileage at? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm right now what I've averaged so far pulling this almost 9,200 pound trailer was 8.2. I'm at 8.1 going up a mountain, but I'm. Yeah, and that's pretty common. This is rated for 17 on the highway and 13 in the city, so it's not great, but it's a 430 rear end, which I appreciate for towing traders, but it's certainly not one you'd get for fuel mileage. And we hope that 2021 tells us more about what they're gonna do for fuel mileage in these. They'll probably go to turbos, they'll probably do all that. But yeah, this does have an eight track system on it, and it's got uh, top ends 108 miles per hour. I've never gotten there. <laughs> try that and the color of this what's the color of this thing uh moon lunar moon it's, lunar, it's, it's lunar, concrete yeah lunar rock yeah. it's concrete <laughs> colored with a little yeah. bit of green yeah it's, it's greenish concrete and there is toyota has one i think that's called concrete and so does ford I never quite understood that but lunar rock this is supposed to be like a rare color that everybody wants see that trailer's not dipping too much on nice roads on nice roads no it's yeah not. i was on some rough roads and it was making me go you know left and right a few times with the weight distributing hitch. But anyway, yeah, I can't hardly read the print on this. This is going to be tricky because it's really small. But well, I'm not this, speeding. Yeah, no, you're doing fine. This one here, if you were to get the max tow pack or whatever their package is, which is probably a two wheel drive, you can go all the way up to 10,200 pounds in the trailer. I think this is rated about 9,900, and we're just right under 9,200. So you got a little bit of room for, for this. For, so is uh, it the trailer that's 9,600 yeah. or is not, it? Not, yeah, the tra yeah the, we're pulling just right under 92, about 9,150. The, the, this particular model, the max is out at 9,900. And yeah, if you were to get pounds. the strip down one, yeah. So, well, yeah, that'd be 900 pounds on the on the, the payload. And I'm going to have to look in the door so I can see the payload. For some reason, I didn't write payload down. But, you know. So like you got like saying, a yearling in the back if we have a horse trailer yeah. or a smaller camper or it's a fun truck is what we're doing with it. Yeah, because this trailer by itself I think is a little over 4,000. But it's a four horse trailer so it's yep. a big trailer. 
It's even got a, uh, a NASCAR wing on the back. So it's the fastest train in the world. That's why I'm saying we got to talk loud and get paid for it for us to be heard because it is. It is one that's one of the loudest out there. Well, actually, the TRX might be the loudest now, but the regular trucks, not the super trucks, this is the loudest. And it does sound cool if you don't want to talk to anybody in the cab or you're towing trainers. And you take the trainer off, you got a lot better control. Is that all I got to do? Yeah. Take the trainer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was getting so nobody talks. Oh, you like floor. that idea? Yeah, it could be. Floor. Tell the kids you can't talk, I can't hear you. You should write a book about how to drive in the mountains. It's different oh. about it. We haven't been to Estes in quite a while. We haven't. When that fire came through, it kind of closed everything up around here. Yeah, and California still got some fires going again. It's one strange year. I'll be happy 2021 comes around. My loud Toyota. It's a loud Toyota this time. Thunder rolls. Yep, it does sound cool. I might need a nap after this. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's kinda... Is that hum putting you to sleep? Uh, I wouldn't say it's, uh, it's just peaceful. Yes, it is. I, I love driving through the mountains. It's just, you know, I can just fall asleep at any time. Yeah. I don't know why I am driving, so careful. This guy in front of you won't let you do those. Yeah. Those hit the high, high, speed curves. high speed corners like I like. <laughs> Tomorrow is the day, man. Tomorrow, huh? I gotta remember to bring my helmet, bring my little wristband thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh shoot, I don't even have my, my dog gun mask. Why do I keep forgetting this? If you have a short bed truck, you know it's not easy to hook up to a gooseneck. Pop up came out with these extensions from 9 inches to 16 inches 
keep you from breaking out your back window when you're pulling a gooseneck trailer. And everybody uses a shore bed. That's the most proper truck there is, is a crew cab shore bed. So, protect that window.